I wish I didn't take an illness or knowing there was a limitation in time um, for our relationship to deepen. Uh, I will do bit much. Good afternoon, everyone. Isaac had a sports day today. Well, back in my days, basically, like we did everyone, like running, sack race, spoon and potato. But like these days, I think there's so many classes that the kids like only pick like two races, but he did really well. Good morning, guys. <sighs> just in this stage where you're either just so busy or so tired. In between like the packed lunches and like prepping the dinners <laughs> and all the school runs and picking up the crumbs every day just goes by so soon and I think I've gone quite antisocial as well because like mentally I don't really have it in me to like or the mental capacity to have like conversations even socializing I feel like it drains me proper raining night yesterday was Father's Day and it was quite an interesting Father's Day. Um, I spent it with my maternal grandfather and that was never happened. And some of you guys know that my grandfather is not doing well and is currently in um, end of life care. So yeah, we thought yesterday was that day. And you know, we all, we all went to, well, I was supposed to go say goodbye, but I think he still got a little bit left in him. It was lovely to see him. Um, it's such a, I feel like before I met RG, I, I was very uncomfortable with death. Like my family, we never speak about it. And you know, being with RG, obviously when we were first together, he lost his mom. Seeing him go through that, like it, it allowed me actually to know what to expect. It really sucks to see them be like this. And in the midst of his pain, um, he's still able to give me the biggest smile. He uses all his energy to put his hands in my face. This is a guy that can barely hold like a small sippy cup with his hands, but he has the energy to hold my face. I know I have been feeling quite tired lately, um, but you know, after seeing my grandfather yesterday, like I was so thankful knowing that Okay, I'm gonna close my eyes, I'm gonna go to bed and I, not that I know, but there's a very high chance I'm gonna wake up. Like, I don't have to think, is this it? I spent today doing a lot of gardening work. I've been outside, I've been bare feet and you just absorb the energy, the positive energy. And I, I felt like the sun really helped me today to give me some positive energy and that's what I do. I love to open my patio door and I let the sun beam, beam on me and I literally imagine like the sun powering me up and I'm absorbing all that good energy. Um, so that's what I did today. I did that while I worked out. I did that while I was like strimming the grass. Since the kids couldn't be with their daddy yesterday for Father's Day, um, they returned back today and I will see them on Wednesday. Um, yeah, today was actually the first time in I don't know how long since like we all had lunch together. And uh, yeah, what happened was I had to pick up Ayla first so that Isaac could be taken to a eye doctor. Isaac's been blinking really hard and we noticed it a few months ago and at first I thought maybe he needed glasses and then the eye doctor said his vision's perfect and it happened to be beginning of spring so the doctor was like, it's most likely allergies. But it just progressively kind of got worse and the GP prescribed him some special eye drops and a different antihistamine but it didn't seem to work. So the GP thinks it's habitual or psychological. So we wanted to go to like a really good eye doctor just to really rule it out that his eyes are fine. Cause I kind of, they don't, they didn't look irritated to me. They didn't look dry. It didn't look like it was watering a lot. So I. Like I knew his eyes were fine, but he'd be blinking a lot and it seems like it's a habitual thing and the eye doctor said, um, yeah, he says he sees these cases a lot and he, he thinks Isaac will grow out of it, but he basically told us not to acknowledge it. Afterwards, um, you know, Isaac and his dad met us in the playground 
and we all had a picnic there and it was actually, it felt nice, it felt normal. Slime time! Slime time! <laughs> Like, as much as you want to question, like, why are kids so into this? Like, I, I get it. I get that, like, it feels nice, sensory-wise. The kids are having their breakfast, and you know, every day I try to come out and pull some weeds. So I'll show you how it works. So there's a piece of weed here. Can you see? Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to step on it, <laughs> yeah, and then just very firmly pull back towards me. And what it does is it pretty much um, takes it straight from the root. Do you see? It's very therapeutic. I have a little pile here, which I come back to. Oh step on it and then just firmly pull nice the only thing is it does leave like some holes i don't care about that it's okay i can live with it good afternoon everybody i'm just on my way back um so yeah i just said goodbye to my grandfather we played songs for him i'm pretty sure he can hear me um but yeah i know like a little while back we had like a little false alarm and he had a little bit more to go but um yeah i think you know this time really is it as sad as it is to see my grandfather's life deteriorate i'm so thankful that the pain i don't want to say short because he's in a lot of pain um but i'm thankful that you know he doesn't have to suffer much longer being able to spend your last moments on earth with your loved ones is beautiful i mean earlier my grandfather was just in the living room and you know they made it so like there's a bed there for him he's so sedated um but yeah on the other side of the room there's me my mom my aunt my uncle my grandmother and you know we're sitting there having a meal and there was just something so beautiful about that. Like the weather's so beautiful today. I could hear kids playing outside. And I think it made my grandfather happy that we were all just having a meal, you know? Like it made, I think it makes him happy for him to hear that. I just felt like there were angels in that room with us. It was very, very peaceful in there. P people can be very uncomfortable with death and it's understandable because it's, it's 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 a subject of the unknown it's painful and, and yet like you know death is part of life so yeah i'm really thankful for the past several weeks i feel like i certainly felt a lot closer to him <sighs> last night my grandfather passed away he had his wife, my mum, and my auntie by his side. Um, well, we miss him and we're sad that he's no longer here. We're happy for him that he's no longer in pain. Um, his body served him well, really well for the past 86 years. It's allowed him to do incredible things and now he no longer needs that body. I wish it didn't take an illness or knowing there was a limitation in time um, for our relationship to deepen. Um, you know, in the past few months, it's like, I didn't feel like I needed to talk with him. You know, I felt like I could feel the love and I could, I could like it's telepathically, like I felt like we were able to, like the love was there just from holding his hand and looking at his eyes. And I really felt like near the end, my grandfather, even though he was in pain, like he, he was at peace. I'm sorry, this vlog has been more morbid, but I think if there's anything to take away from this vlog, it's when we're in bed near the end of time. Like we, we don't ask to see our diplomas. We don't ask 
to see our fancy cars or to look at our bank account. What really matters are just the people that's by your side. And if your relationships are what matters at the end of the day, why do so many of us wait until, you know, it's, it's too late? Take some time to spend with your loved ones. 